Today on the Founder Content Studio podcast, we are joined by Yaroslav, one of the three co-founders and CEO of Meta Ads, a man who is reshaping the advertising world within the metaverse. Stay with us as Yaroslav peels back the curtain and on the keys of advertising inside the metaverse, what he thinks on the metaverse and why it's important for the future and his journey at becoming a founder. You won't hear this anywhere else. Stick around to the end where Yaroslav will share an exclusive insight about the pros and cons of being a bootstrap company. Enjoy. So um, thanks for joining me. And first things first, the word metaverse gets thrown around a lot. Yeah. So that's true. That's what true. is the metaverse and how many metaverses are there? Oh, well, um, I, I strongly believe that there should be only one metaverse. Yes. And uh, if, if, if to start from the very beginning, for me, the metaverse is like, a, you know, an immersive world that combines so, social institutions. So you can chat, you can negotiate with people, you can do some actions, you can, you can learn, you can work, you can build. So it's like another immersive world, which, which helps you and your friends together, together no matter where you are located at the moment. So it's like a great opportunity to gather and to do something within the immersive world. Okay. And at, at the moment, ha like, cause I'm, I'm in the space a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, with sense mm -hmm. Glove and, and, and the people that I tend to talk with are mainly people within the VR, AR, XR space, but I still get confused about how many metaverses are there currently kicking about? Like I see so many different platforms, so many different providers, so many different uh, pieces of hardware. How many metaverses are there currently? Well, uh, there are, there are some really big, uh, we can name such as, you know, Roblox, for example, because they are rocking really seriously. Uh, they have a huge fan base. Um, we can talk about sandbox because sandbox aggregates like huge amount of brands uh within the metaverse and it is like very interesting phenomenon in order to understand how it works so it's like very interesting and really phenomenal place um yeah i should mention that there are like metaverses which are fully web 3.0 ones such as for example as a decentraland it's a place for 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 geeks you know uh for guys who are who really uh, want to know more about Web3 community, who want to know more about Web3 surrounding. Um, and of course, there are uh, like metaverses, as they are usually call, called, you know, 2.5, uh, such as Roblox, uh, such as crypt, um, such as CryptoVoxels, I suppose, such as Fortnite, because these are like the games. They are more, they provide more experience with the gaming community. So. It's a very interesting question. So rocking on, I think it's like five to six metaverses, uh, which are really huge that, that have got like the hugest amount of players within it. Okay. And then what is like, for me, I'm not a super, uh, a tech nerdy guy, but as I said, I'm in the space, so I know a little bit about it, but mm -hmm. what's the difference between like web 2.0, 2.5 and, and three uh, yeah uh, the difference uh, goes to decentralization yeah so uh, if we are talking about the web 2.5 it's a centralized world uh where uh, i don't know where the managers rule this world and if we are talking about web 3 worlds uh, users can buy their land they can create their own locations uh they can uh, you know invite their friends, they can build uh, any products. Uh, if we are talking uh, about the software products, for example, uh, as a meta ads, uh, we have built, uh, we started our journey actually from, uh, from building our product within the Decentraland. And uh, there was no need to ask someone, is it possible to build something and to integrate it within the current metaverse? If we are talking about the 2.5 metaverses, you need to ask, is it possible to install uh, your product within this metaverse or not? Okay. That's, uh, yeah, it's for, for somebody like me that, uh, that makes sense. Uh, mm -hmm. but I probably need to dig a little bit deeper, 
uh, inside that to fully grasp it inside my head. But you talked about Decentral land, and uh, that's kind of where Meta Ads was created and started. So tell me a little bit about how that came to be, who are the co-founders, and, and how did you guys end up with this marketing platform in the metaverse? Yeah, uh, let's venture, you know, back to the dawn of meta ads. Um, so the genesis of meta ads, um, it can be traced back uh, to a compelling conversation uh, between our co-founders. Uh, we have two of them, I mean, three of them, me and two other guys. So the first one is uh, Nikolai uh, Perkov, who is our like uh, chief visionary officer and our CIO Roman. Uh, together, they were exploring uh, the idea of enabling uh, users to seamlessly transfer their virtual assets um, across the immersive world. So this was like the first idea. Um, at the same time, uh, me and Mick, uh, we were running uh, an advertising uh, network uh, where, you know, the holographic screens uh, met the intelligence ca cameras. Um, and we were immer immersed in the complex uh, of world of um, analytics of advertising world. Uh, and I suppose uh, we were great experts in the field of digital out of home advertising. So uh, when our trio of co-founders, uh, it finally um, gathered together, we, we started brainstorming. Um, we recognized that it was like very early stage uh, for, for the first concept uh, and uh, we pivoted it to um, um, an equally innovative but um, more tangible venture, yeah? Um, and that the was like, we introduced advertising into the metaverses and immersive worlds. Uh, from this defining moment, I think that the metaverse was born. So um, we, in a month, uh, we, we, we kicked off from participation uh, in the near build hackathon. Um, our project did really great. Uh, we come up with a second place uh, and we got a special shout out for the best use of technology. Um, praised by community, we decided to move uh, to move further, and we started improving uh, and developing our platform to make it, you know, more perfect, more precise. Um, also, during this year, uh, we were even nominated and accepted into like top 100 metaverse innovators, um, and uh, you know, we felt as uh, we felt like we were a game changers in the virtual worlds, uh, and now our product you know, is ready to take the immersive world by storm. <laughs> cool. Uh, cool. I think, and, yeah. And, and, sorry, sorry, what, and what year did you guys, um, I, I'm just imagining you guys sat around a, a table coming up with this like devising plan and like, what, what year was this? Uh, what, what year did this uh, company's yeah, uh, it happened, created, actually, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, it happened between 2021 and 2022, but it was happening on the new year. Uh, you, you know, we were, we gathered together, by the way, <laughs> in my home. Uh, yeah, and we were discussing all, all these issues um, and we were brain, brainstorming hard, you know, um, we were drinking i suppose yes and then uh, we came out with the idea that we need to shift uh from the first idea uh we need to pivot it and uh, to make uh an advertising uh, marketing tools um like the main target of our project yeah i was because, gonna say me, yeah. and me, and, me and my friends have had many good ideas after a few beers but I don't think <laughs> yeah, we yeah. ever i don't think we ever created something that you guys have created <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, yeah. So, okay. So we, we were going into uh, a little bit more about how the company was created. Um, and where did we get to? Uh, I kind of, I kind of interrupted you. You were setting the scene. And so, so what, what is the vision for the company then? Cause at the start of the podcast, I give like a, a, a brief introduction to you and the company. Um, but what is the vision of the platform? Where mm -hmm. do you see it going? Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, um, actually, uh, at MetaEds, our mission resonates with the spirit of the ever-evolving Web 3.0 landscape. Uh, we really aim to create a new paradigm uh, of marketing tools and advertising uh, within, uh, you know, immersive worlds. 
we want to we want to implement uh, new standards uh, of advertising and new standards of marketing tools uh, in Web3. Uh, because right now we are working, you know, hand in hand with metaverse users, with creators, uh, with landlords, with 3D studios, with metaverse owners. Um, and at our core, uh, we are actually driven by the need to ensure a balanced distribution um, of economic rewards among, among users. Uh, while at the same time, uh, we want to, to create a conditions for, for the effective management and monetization uh, of digital content spread within the metaverse. Um, so hand in hand with this goal, uh, we are trying to guide you know, brands and we, our uh, task is to provide them with insights and with strategies um, in order to expand um, and uh, and three uh, in the compelling realms of the metaverse. So our target is to help them scale a lot and help them to understand how their marketing campaigns works. Okay, and obviously one in, uh, aspect of marketing is uh, the ability to target individuals in your target group, right? So if I'm yes. somebody using your platform, uh, how, do I, how do I target people within the metaverse what does that targeting look like? I'm just, I'm visualizing it something being like <laughs> when I've done like an Instagram ad or a Facebook ad, is it the same sort of targeting that you would use in those different platforms? Uh, actually, yes. Uh, it looks like pretty the same uh, because in the metaverses, uh, there are two ways how you can uh, implement your ad creatives. So the first one uh, is to install a billboard in, within a particular place. Uh, and the second one is to create a scene. So if you would like to target uh, some content from this billboard, it actually looks like a classic targeting uh, in the real world. Um, it just gathers information based on our analytic data. We, we gather a lot of about analytic data. Um, well, so, if to so start from the beginning, sorry. you need, uh, yeah, sorry. So I was going to say analytic data, meaning um, where, where people are looking, where people like heat maps and, 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 and am I, am I yeah, in the right direction yeah. there? Um, I think that I should describe how the meta ads works from, from very beginning in order for, for listeners to understand uh, yeah. the main idea. Yeah. So it's um, uh, meta ads actually draws its foundation from the classic advertising model. Yes, um, I already told you that we have got uh, a huge background in the digital out of home segment. So uh, the advertising model, we took the classic digital out of home model and we just tailored it to the um, intricates of the metaverse. Uh, so, for example, uh, if you're a landowner uh, and you have a place in the metaverse that attracts um, a substantial traffic uh, of users, or you have a venue for events and you conduct a lot of events, or you create like a 3D studios, you create unique experiences uh, in this allocation, uh, Meta Ads offers you like a whole scope of marketing tools. Um, so let's start from the very classic one uh, it's called a display uh display di oh, display uh, digital signage digital signage yeah like a uh, billboard yes for the billboard uh like picture the power uh, that uh, you can dictate uh, the sequence you can set up duration uh, you can set up the amount of ad creatives um ensuring your your ad campaign uh, to capture and maximize um, every ounce of engagement within the world. Um, and now uh, it's not limited only to one billboard. So um, you can do it uh, to whole scope of your billboards located in, uh, in, your, in your location. So it works really perfect. And it helps you to do it, you know, automatically, not without doing it uh, with your hands. For example, in Decentraland, uh, you can go uh, to SDK, uh, you can set up a new image, for example, but it won't be, you know, changing while your ad campaign goes. So in order to do it, you need to go back uh, to your location. You need to redeploy your scene again. And then only after the redeployment, you will have a new ad creative within your location. We are doing it automatically, seamlessly from, uh, from our cabinet. Uh, 
um yeah shifting to to another uh marketing tool which you, which we already mentioned it's analytics um and in my opinion analytics are very important uh they are very necessary for brands because uh the main idea of brands uh they need to understand how they scale uh within the metaverse so uh analytics provide them with a deep uh, deeper dive um into analysis of um every every digital campaign uh we gather uh, in our project we gather uh an offline da uh, on chain data and uh, off chain data so okay. uh, yeah, just, yeah. Just, just on just on that so for somebody like me on chain and off chain i have no idea <laughs> what that means what okay go, in, go into that a little bit more what is on chain yeah. and off chain data for example uh, if we are talking about on chain data uh we can uh, gather all uh, information about the user wallet for example we can gather information about which tokens they have in their wallet uh we can gather information which wallet they were using uh to log in uh within the metaverse world um if we are talking about an off-chain an analytics we can uh, gather the data uh about the geolocation of users uh we can re reveal uh where they originally come from which part of the world uh we can know more exact data about them um and in future we are we want to implement uh you know uh such service when the user can fill his information and we can uh, get a deeper insight and in exchange, user are going to receive some rewards from the meta ads. This one is uh, also also possible, but not at the moment in the future. And also, uh, when we are talking about this analytic data, which we are gathering, I should mention, uh, you know, three-dimensional and two-dimensional heat maps. Uh, we finished uh, these tools like two months ago, and right now we are we are testing them uh, in the in the decentralized world. By the way uh they show user activity uh so they have um a color indicators um and they these indicators show us uh where users fre frequently go um and uh, we deem the places uh which they uh where they where they like to spend their time um for example if you want to to improve your low traffic spots uh you can use this to make these spots more attractive because you can understand uh, the user journey map and you can see it and it helps you to to improve your location and it helps you to see how your location uh gonna work and of course for uh advertisers it is a really great tool um in order to find the best advertising spot within the location and um, actually another part that uh, is very necessary that all this uh, activity data it comes from users so you can um, as a landowner uh, you can use this data in order to uh, optimize navigation uh, you can make um, uh, you can ensure uh, a more friendly uh, user lay layout um, and also you can find uh, the most suitable places for the advertising when you see the most crowded places uh, within your location. Nice. Yes. Very, very nice. And so what what currency are people using inside the meta? Is like a Bitcoin, Ethereum, US dollar? What, what, how do, uh, how do, yeah. Or does it vary? Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a, a newbie <laughs> to <laughs> this kind of stuff. No, no problems. Um, yeah. Um, it depends on the metaverse. So each metaverse usually have their own currency. Uh, for example, Decentraland has Mana, Roblox has their Robuxes, uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, if we are talking about our platform uh, right now, uh, we are integrating a FIAT payment because at the very beginning, uh, blockchain. Uh, and the near blockchain is not very suitable for the brands uh, and the for, for advertisers because, you know, they are facing uh, these issues uh, when they are trying to pay and it is more comfortable for them to pay in Fiat. So if we are talking about our platform, uh, we are using Fiat payment at the moment. And it's like uh, it streamlines uh, our uh, our 
the way how we negotiate with uh, the brands because it's much easier for them to to pay in fire uh, either to convert their file payments into crypto and then conduct a payment sometimes they, they can't do it yeah definitely mm -hmm. making making things easy for people to pay is like yeah the number one rule right they they don't want any barriers no no barriers to entry when people are trying to pay you money that's uh that's rule number one and um I looked, I looked through uh, your LinkedIn and saw a few things. And one of the things that stuck out to me, which I had no idea was a, a, a real thing, is the Metaverse President election. Oh, yeah. And I, I saw, for the, for the people who are listening, I saw an image of Donald Trump with a giant head and small legs uh, oh, yeah. in a video next to Burger King. And... It, was, it wasn't what I was expecting. So tell me a little bit more about, yeah, the current president in the metaverse and, 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 and what is that? And t tell me a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, this idea originally goes to our partners from Spheroid Metaverse. Um, in future, we are planning to integrate our solutions to their metaverse, but right now we are helping them to to advertise their presidential elections. So uh, it's like a debate uh between uh you know uh they have donald trump they they have uh, a vote actually so they are voting uh for for the people who want uh, to be elected during uh these campaigns and they are adding uh, new candidates uh and it's like their their own product which they're creating uh right now and they have got i think that they have quite a huge buzz about it uh, on the x former former twitter yeah and um, i'm not sure how they're going uh, right now but we help them to to create this advertising campaign with the, within the metaverse and they had like uh, a lot of people uh, looking these ads and and they attracted a lot of traffic uh, to to our uh, headquarters which are located in the vrs mall uh, within the decentraland metaverse and it was quite fun to helping them uh creating uh, this this project and helping them advertising it within the metaverses yeah yeah i i when i first read that i was imagining <laughs> I, I had this image of like donald trump and president joe biden like wearing an oculus quest giving a talk inside the met metaverse <laughs> and I wasn't sure if that was it, but, uh, it's, it's obviously not. Actually, they have like um, XR metaverse, um, and inside of their excite metaverse, uh, they have this Donald Trump speaking about the way how he's going to be elected uh, during these, uh, elections. And it's, it's really fun. Uh, if you would like to, I will, uh, I will provide you with links for, for this Please event. Do. Yeah, yeah, Please and uh, for the guys from this event as well. Yeah, for sure. All right, let, let, let's take it back to um, the analytics side of things. So if, if I'm a marketer, because uh, I, I think about uh, marketing a lot because I do it for uh, my own business. I do it with like the company I, I work with and mm -hmm. I'm involved in like the marketing process and gathering, gathering data and the analytical side is the most important thing. What would you say is the, the key the key metric or the key piece of data the meta ads can provide marketers to, mm -hmm. to ensure that they have a good campaign. Uh, yeah, it's a very, very great question. Actually, uh, we do lean um, on the classic metrics, uh, such as a cost per click, such as a cost per mile, um they provide us with a fun the fundamental sense um of of our spendings versus, versus you know the user engagement uh but in metaverse with our technology uh we go even deeper because uh we track uh a total views uh to see our campaign overall visibility uh within a particular metaverse or within the whole scope of metaverses um then we track a unique users because it's it's another very uh val val valuable uh, metric for them because uh we get information about the individual reach of uh, of our advertising campaign um we also keep an eye uh, on the amount of authorized users uh this metric helps us to understand how many uh users uh were logging in as a guests 
and how many users uh, will log in with the help of their Web3 wallet. Um, we also have this very necessary magic, which comes from uh, from the dog market, from the digital out of home market. It's called a focused view, and it's like super interesting because it's uh, this metric can show us the engagement of users. So it's like not just you're bypassing the advertising and you just giving it a quick glance. It's like uh, the way when you are bypassing the advertising and you see the ad creative and you like it and you just spend a whole time in order to watch this ad from the beginning till the end or maybe spend more time so this one shows for the marketers who are conducting uh, an a b testing they can uh, understand which creative is more uh, is more suitable um and of course we have uh, we have reac reactions and we have clicks uh, if we are talking uh, re about reactions uh, they give us a vibe check how people are feeling about the content so uh, it also comes uh, really close with uh, with an engagement metric um, and uh, and clicks uh, users can click on the billboard and they will be transferred to to a website uh, of of an ad and they can buy so we can understand the conversion uh, which comes from from the metaverse. Okay. Yeah. This and, is, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, um, and what are some of the I don't know best practices, some of the best tips? Like you guys <laughs> must have seen a lot of marketing happen inside the metaverse so far, and, and in these different uh, lands and places. What what are some of the best advertisements you've seen, or or some of the best tips? If you were mm -hmm. going to give me a tip on uh, how to advertise in the metaverse, what tips would you give me personally? Well, I think of giving you like three tips at the moment <laughs> because, you know, uh, crafting and, uh, and engagement advertising in metaverse, uh, it's, it's a science itself. <laughs> yeah, and I love to share some of my experience. First of all, uh, when brands want to enter the metaverse, they, they should know their audience. Uh, at the heart of every successful campaign uh, lays the deep understanding of your targeted audience. So uh, you should ask yourself, as a marketer, you should ask yourself uh, questions. Who are they? Uh, what, do, what do they like? Yes. Uh, what drives them? Um, and you should ask these questions just before you start designing your ad it is very necessary to receive the, um, the answers for these questions. Um, the more precisely uh, you tailor your content, the better it will resonate with your audience uh, in a Paramount. So, uh, and another advice, which I have in my mind, <laughs> I'd like to say that it comes from a real estate market. Um, and uh, I can say it in three words, it's location, location and location. Um, now, when you know your audience, yes, yeah, the next step is uh, to understand you know, where to find them. Uh, you need to understand in in which metaverse do they usually stay. So, uh, for example, if you go uh, to tap on uh, on younger demographics, for example, from twelve to to eighteen, yes. So you need to target platforms such as Roblox. Um, or, for example, uh, if you are marketing uh, something which is used to be a geek centric product, I don't know, maybe you want to target a, uh, you, you want to advertise a, a flipper zero. Yes, it's a <laughs> it's a geek multi tool device. Uh, so your audience uh, should be very geeky uh, and where to find the geeky audience. I think you should try Decentraland. Yes. So when you know uh where your audience stay uh you can you can find them and you can uh, uh you can make a better targeting of your ad uh and the third place is like uh, interactive engagement this one is also possible just do not set up only the ads it it it, it won't work you know uh it's like uh, the metaverse it's isn't just a passive platform um you need to uh you need to make some real entertainments for your users think of i don't know some mini games think of quizzes think of the airdrops uh, which can grow uh, your audience 
the more you can engage your audience in your advertising, uh, the more memorable your campaign becomes for, for these users. So uh, be creative and create something special, which, which will make users more interested in your product. So you could actually create some sort of game around yeah. an advert. Sure, sure. Not only games or not only games. It can be all type of, of different actions. It can be events. Uh, for example, I don't know. You can create like a yoga party with the... Uh, by the way, um, I would like to mention that we have got a, a streaming option which helps uh, to create a digital twins of events. For example, uh, you can have uh, your yoga party in real life and some of people, they can't simply attend this party. So for these people, you can create a same location in the immersive world and you can stream uh, all the uh, active parts which are going in real life straight into the immersive world. And this comes in handy when you are conducting some seminars, webinars, AMA session uh, events. So it's very common and suitable tool for them. Yeah, I can imagine it. I didn't even know a yoga party was a thing, but apparently <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, what, what, one thing you mentioned there was like the age of uh, people inside the metaverse. What, what are you seeing from the data that is, because I imagine that it's quite a young demographic of people. Uh, am I right in that? Mm, not exactly. It all comes to, to the metaverse. So there are like different uh, metaverses which targeted different audience. Um, and uh, it actually works in 80% uh, often. Because, uh, you know, uh, if we are talking about Roblox, you're going to face children, yes? For example, from the age of 8 um, until age of 18. Uh, if we are talking about Sandbox, for example, uh, they have a lot of millennials uh, in this uh, metaverse. If we are talking about Decentraland, uh, we have got a huge scope of different people ages. Uh, if we are talking about VR chat, for example, uh, we have got a whole scope of people from from the age of 25 up to age of uh, 30 years old. So uh, here it is better to receive some consulting from, from a Metaads or maybe from another company in order to understand uh, where you can find uh, the most suitable um, auditory for, for your advertisement. And what do you think some of the uh, current issues are, or not even issues, let's say, what do you think is stopping people from advertising more in the metaverse? Is it a lack of knowledge? Is it a lack of understanding? Is it, do people just not see the value in it yet? Or, or do you see it picking up rapidly? Mm. First of all, I see the problem in traffic. So we are, you know, we are waiting for mass adoption. Uh, we want to find more people within the metaverses. And in the moment, at, the, at this very moment, I think that uh, the brands, they're, just conducting the A-B testing of, of their products. They want to find like the best way, uh, best ways and best solutions, how they communicate uh, with their audience, how they can target their content to this audience. Uh, and the main problem is that we don't have, you know, a huge amount of this audience within a, an existing world. We need to have like more people. Uh, we want to have more traffic within uh, the metaverse. We want to create you know, huger events. Uh, we want uh, to have more creators. Uh, and another problem, it actually goes to creators because, uh, for example, uh, you want to create uh, your own uh, immersive experience. Yes. Uh, what you should have uh, in your background, you, you, you just don't need to have, you know, a great idea. Uh, it's not only about the great idea. Uh, you need to have a great scope of knowledge of 3D modeling in order to create, um, in order to create a world which you imagine. Uh, you need to be great in uh, programming sometimes because you need to program your uh, location in order to make it work perfectly. Um, you need to create some texts for your NPCs. You need to uh, integrate some technologies which can help you to understand how your location works. So, um, and these 
a problem has a gap for users yes and it and it's really hard for users to to enter the metaverse right now especially creators because if you're creating and you have a great idea you need to have also uh, all these knowledges which i told you or either you need to have a huge amount of mo money yes to to find these people who gonna who gonna real, who gonna make your idea come true yeah. So, um, and with the help of uh, AI, I think we can we can overcome this problem. And um, I'm pretty sure that AI will help the metaverses to receive, you know, a mass adoption at this very moment. Do, do you see AI building, uh, yeah, building advertisements? Do you see AI building something for me in the future in the metaverse? Because if I came in and I had an idea. I would be one of those people that has no idea about 3D modeling, has no idea how to develop, but people like me, we love AI because it can copyright for us and it can hopefully one day build a digital world for us. Do, do you see that happening? Oh, well, actually, yes. Uh, I think that generative AI uh, will be like the most common tool to, to help uh, metaverses grow. Because uh, as I already told you, yeah, uh, it is really hard to create your experience within Metaverse if you are all alone. And I'm pretty sure uh, that AI technology helps us uh, to make it, uh, to, to create uh, all what we imagine in, instead of us. So right now, if uh, we have a significant growth in, in AI, the users, uh, they just they just don't need you know uh to have uh all these tools because ai gonna gonna create um, the experiences for them you, you will just describe for example type okay right now i want to create a post apocalyptic world with you know with some barbies inside of this world and ai will generate uh, all the location and will create all the 3d models and the ai is gonna write you know uh, all the texts for NPCs, and it will be a very, very common and very necessary tool in order to create your spaces. I'm praying for that day because that will <laughs> save me a lot of time and money. <laughs> but we, we, we were talking about uh, mass adoption. W what do you think has to happen for VR to be mass adopted? Like, let's take the iPhone, for example, and, and smartphones. What, what what does VR have to become for for mass adoption? Uh, yeah, if we are talking about uh, the VR technology, we should talk about the helmets first of all. Uh, we all heard the buzz about the Apple Vision Pro, yes, that is going to come and change the market, but I'm not sure about it. Uh, <laughs> I'm not happy with what I have seen. Bring but, your wallet. That's what yeah. I would say. Make sure you've got a, a very <laughs> deep pocket or a a maxed out or not not a maxed out credit card yeah that's true that's true because instead of buying uh, apple vr you can you can use a simple meta quest too yes which cost which will cost you only 350 us dollars and they're coming up with a third model uh very soon and it actually provides you with um, all access uh to the metaverses um and of course we can talk uh, about such company as a pika uh, Pika 4, Pika, I, I think that they are launching Pika 5 as well. Uh, this one goes to, to the Steam platform as well. And I think that these hel helmets will, will just need to be improved a little bit more. And also I was thinking about uh, the helmets with, uh, you know, not VR helmets, with AR helmets. And I mean, with ARs, um, sunglasses, for example, I'm really waiting for these because it will provide us uh, with some new technology as well. Yeah, I totally agree. I, 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 from my limited uh, knowledge compared to a lot of people in this space, I actually see AR being a bigger player eventually in terms of the metaverse, just because I can't imagine people spending too much time in a virtual reality but I can imagine somebody or people wearing glasses like this with a, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, a hologram in front of them, for example, as long as the field of view gets better. Because I think that's the one thing that's holding people back at the moment is even when you try on the most expensive AR glasses, the field of view is like, it's like this big, it's tiny. 
and all of the advertisement uh, that you see online, it's like this perfect world. And then you put the glasses on and it's uh, a bit pants, to be honest with you. So what do you think yeah. about it? Um, I think it's totally true. Um, and we are looking towards, uh, this, you know, idea as well. Uh, and, uh, we are, you know, learning more about the XR technologies at the moment. Uh, by the way, uh, we, we have our partnership with, uh, some of the, uh, XR worlds, for example, you talk, we, we talked today about the elections and, the these the guys from uh the spheroid metaverse they are doing actually an ar metaverse so uh they want to integrate uh an ar advertising so uh, at the moment uh, they are working with uh, smartphones um, and you can you know simply target the smartphone it's very common technology right now and you can see you know uh, additional reality uh through the screen of your cell phone but uh, I'm I'm re I'm really sure that the mass adoption of um, AR technology will come at this very moment uh, when uh, something like Google uh, Google glasses. Yes, I thought that the Google glasses would make a revolution, but no. So we are waiting for a new player to emerge on this uh, field, and uh, we, we I'm pretty sure that they're gonna emerge like in the closest years, maybe yeah. one or two years. Yeah, I hope so. I, I really hope so from, but from one of the, from some of the experts I've spoken to in the field, they're skeptical at best about AR, uh, sorry, AR technology coming mm -hmm. through in the next couple of years. But these things move extremely quickly as we've seen with AI advancements and VR advancements just in the last two, three years. So who knows? Yeah, we actually shifted from, you know, you remember these huge cell phones uh, to iPhones pretty fast. It took us like 10 years. So I'm pretty sure that for AR, it's going to take less, less than 10 years, probably yeah. two years, maybe, maybe three. I don't know. I, I actually remember the first cell phone that I ever <laughs> saw was my dad's. And literally I, I could, I was, I would use it like this. It was, it was a brick. Uh, so yeah. And then literally 10 years later. It was like the Nokia 4210, which was tiny. So, yeah, I had Nokia uh, 11 to zeros yeah. and it was like huge <laughs> for cell phone, but it was like really rough and unbreakable. You could do anything with it. It yeah. was very, very great. To Nowadays, you got to be very careful with iPhones or else they end up uh, looking like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, um, that's true. That's what, what, true. One thing, one thing you mentioned was the, the brands. So. How do you guys go about, uh, this is more on the business side of things. How do you guys go about uh, attracting brands to your platform? How do you go about, because I'm, in, I'm into business development and sales and marketing. So mm -hmm. how do you guys go about acquiring brands to get onto your platform? Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, we are creating uh, and conducting some podcasts. Uh, we are creating some master classes via LinkedIn because LinkedIn helps us to generate um, a huge uh, traffic uh, because uh, traffic of leads, of course, and it is a very, very great tool for people who are searching for the leads. Uh, another uh, option is uh, to travel all around the world and to visit uh, the expos. For example, we're gonna uh, we are we're gonna travel to uh, Köln uh, during uh, this month uh, in order to visit a digital marketing expo, uh, which is gonna happen, I suppose, on the twentieth, twenty first of September. Um, yeah, it's, it's another, uh, places where you can receive a lot of leads because, uh, people, especially after the COVID, uh, they really, they really adore, uh, and offline events, uh, because they are tired of speaking, you know, heads and, uh, they, they, they are open-minded, especially if you are traveling and visiting, you know, web three events and. Actually, the event is one uh, of, uh, of very interesting ways how you can get the leads and partnerships and collapse. Yeah, I, I totally agree. After COVID, I think everyone is desperate for human interactions again. Uh, and, and, and those events have been, yeah, great for businesses that I've been involved in as well. Um, let, let, let's focus more on the business side of things. So then you guys, you guys go to events, you do your own marketing. Do you guys have a, a, a sales team or is it just, uh, uh, 
one sales guy or because I know the company is around 14 to 15 people now. Uh, no, we are we are actually maintaining as a startup at the at the moment, uh, and we don't have a really huge uh, sales team. Uh, our sales team consists of uh, of three people uh, at this very moment, and um, we are searching for the collaboration with um, a Web two uh, zero media agency. I mean classic media agencies such as a clear channel for example uh in order to make a partnership with with them uh and uh, we are trying to uh generate leads as well from them because it's like uh we are searching for a powerful you know uh, partner to to develop and to to increase uh to enhance our company at the moment okay and 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 a little bit about the the business model itself how, how does that look? How do you guys as a company, like, tell me what you can obviously tell me, but how do you guys uh, generate revenue? Is it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. through ad spend? Is it through um, advertising on the platform? How, how does that uh, revenue model look? Yeah. So uh, first of all, uh, we are providing uh, the advertisers uh, with a tool to advertise within the metaverse. So we receive uh, a percentage fee from each advertising conducted through our platform. Um, another way is that we are providing our tools for the uh, 3D agencies, which are creating experiences within the metaverse. And they are gathering, they're using our data, they're using uh, our heat maps, they're using our analytics, and they find the way how they can improve their locations, their experiences, which they are creating within the world. So uh, it is another way. And sometimes uh, we even uh, build uh, 3D scenes for, for the brands and for, for the companies who, who are eager to make it within the world. So it's like three ways how, how we generate revenue at the moment. Ah, and another way, but we haven't conducted yet, uh, we want to launch a subscription model uh, with the metaverses uh, to integrate our product as a white label uh, or on-premises solution seamlessly straight to the metaverse. For example, uh, you can create a great metaverse and you want all these uh, tools to be integrated straight into your metaverse. If you are looking for this, we can provide you with a white label solution or with the on-premises solution as well. Cool. Yeah, yeah the... uh, you know, uh, we are working hard right now um, on integration with uh, Unreal Engine. We have conducted integration with Unity Engine at the moment uh, and uh, our technology and API uh, and SDK are fully suitable for uh, the metaverses which are created uh, on the Unity Engine. And now the next step we are working on integration with uh, Unreal Engine as well because you know uh, it's it's very popular right now to build your metaverse using your Unreal Engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got, you're not finding more resistance for Unreal Engine because I know Unity is more mass adopted by uh, most developers, right? So you're not yes. getting. Do you want to be available on on both Unity and, yes. and Unreal? Yes. yes, we want to be available on the both. It's very necessary for us because um, I think that in future uh, people will make more uh, worlds and more pentaverses on Unreal Engine. And is that um, is that because just of the 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 more cap the better capabilities in terms of the graphics? Yes, yes. Uh, you know, right now uh, all all the metaverses they want to make uh, the graphics like. They, they try to make the graphics uh, to look like uh, the graphics in real life. And, you know, uh, I don't know whether it's a key for success or not, but uh, I talked uh, a lot with, uh, you know, metaverse creators and all of them, they are trying to make it super realistic. Okay. And from, from what I've personally seen of like of metaverse spaces, to me, they all kind of look like, a PlayStation 2 game uh, back in the day. <laughs> and I, I think for a lot of people that aren't in the space, they're very surprised when they go onto the metaverse, for example, and it's a little bit taking a step back in time uh, when you're in these different worlds. And, and they're quite, um, yeah, the, the graphics are never super impressive, you know? And, and I think everyone saw that advert of Mark Zuckerberg 
uh, introducing the metaverse. I think it was what, nearly two years ago now, I think. Mm -hmm. And everyone had this idea of what the metaverse was going to look like, literally a digital representation of the real world. And it's been anything but that. Like, why do you think that the graphics aren't quite as good? Or do you think the graphics are, are fine? Well, um, I do understand uh, the roots of this problem. Uh, you know, it's the problem uh, lays to the powers of uh, powers of your computers and powers of servers. So, I hope that Nvidia are gonna release some some great updates very soon, uh, because you know companies such as Nvidia they are really they are power factory for the metaverse. Uh, uh, they are one of the top dogs when it comes to high performance hardware. And, uh, you know, if, uh, if we grow, uh, in the, if we grow, you know, in the performance of this hardware, we can create a super realistic world. So it's, uh, if you want to make the visually your, your metaverse visually more stunning, you need to have, uh, you know, uh, you and your customers they need to have a better equipment they need to have uh, a more uh, high performance computers or laptops uh, and uh, this goes to another problem to accessibility to the metaverses sometimes it is better to make uh, your metaverse more simple uh, i mean accordingly to, to the question of graphics but uh, to make it more accessible for for the traffic and uh, you know, I can bring you an example of, of Asian market. Yes, I've been to Asia for like eight months already during this year and the previous year. Yeah, I stayed there in Philippines, uh, Vietnamese and and Thailand as well. So uh, they skip this very moment. Right now we are using laptops. Uh, none of the guys from Asia are using the laptops. They skipped this moment when they were using laptops. They all are using cell phones. So uh, if you want to access this huge and growing market, you need, you need to provide an accessible metaverse for them. And if you need to provide an accessible metaverse, it, you, you should provide these guys uh, with an access to this metaverse from, from their cell phone. And this is like the main idea uh, to main uh, to make your metaverse more accessible. If you make your metaverse more accessible, you have more traffic. If you have more traffic, you can earn more money from this traffic. It's like very simple. Okay, interesting, interesting way of looking at it. So, one thing I do want to touch on is a little bit of your background and 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 how you kind of got to where you are now. So. You were a project manager at one point, right? That was like uh, one of your and how. How was the transition from uh, being a project manager to then being like a co-founder and CEO? How have you found that transition moving uh, from like, what was it like four or five years ago? Uh, well, uh, I started my career uh, as a project manager uh, in the startup accelerator. Uh, so we were kicking the projects uh, to Kickstarter, you know, uh, the pro, yeah, we were helping them. Uh, so I received a lot of experience here. Um, and then I shifted uh, to real estate market. Uh, and I realized that it's, it's a great opportunity for me. So I made a project of, uh, of city mall. We launched it from a scratch. Um, after this, uh, in a parallel, uh, we were working on advertising network, uh, as well, and we were creating it. Uh, and actually I sell some, uh, I sold it. Yeah. I don't have it anymore, but it was a real great experience. And uh, this background helped me to, to make my transition from, uh, from a classic market into a web three, uh, market. It happened like two and a half years ago and still uh, i suppose that it is really really great experience because right now um i'm living you know like a life of digital nomad because i'm traveling to a different locations uh and i'm learning a lot from people uh which are surrounding me i do a, a lot of 
uh, business development uh, work and uh, I really do understand uh, how the how the market in web3 lives and what are the main engines of this market and it's you know it's a great experience especially for me I, I really adore it and, and and how old are you actually right now oh, I'm 33 33 yeah so you're yeah. similar age as me and, yeah, and is yeah, the, just, just Jesus, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and is the uh, is the company uh, is is it was it is it bootstrapped in terms of or is or is there investment involved? Uh, yeah, it's it's bootstrapped uh, nice. from the co-founders. Yeah. And 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 how was that process? Because I know I know a lot of people that have bootstrapped companies, and I know a lot of founders who have like angel investor companies as, as well. How have you found that bootstrap startup life? Because there must have been some sort of temptation at some point to maybe think, uh, man, this would be so much easier if we had half a million in the bank. <laughs> well, um, actually, actually, we received um, a really good sum uh, of money when we have won the hackathon, uh, and it was real good. Then we had uh, an angel investor, Cogit and Venture, we received a small sum of money. And um, after this, uh, there was a crypto winter um, and we tried to raise, uh, you know, around, uh, but we were unprepared for this, actually. Yeah, it's a, it's a true story because uh, we didn't have much traction. Um, and for investors, I suppose uh, that it was too early stage, not as now, for example. Yeah. And yeah. after this, we decided that we can't lose this project because it has got like a huge future. So we just decided to bootstrap it. Nice, nice. But you must, so, so, so when you tried to raise capital, what were the big lessons you learned from that then? Because I know it is very difficult. I've, I've seen, I've been involved in startups and scale-ups that have been raising capital. And the current company I work in, we've just raised capital in the last year. And I see the amount of effort and, and strategy and calls and delegation, uh, let, uh, like uh, lawyers involved. And how was that? And, and what did you learn along the way of that? Yeah, what we learned, uh, the, main, uh, the main lesson for me, uh, it was that you need to have a huge traction. If you have a huge traction, then you can go to investors. If you are just starting your project, you need to... You need to improve it. You need to make it uh, more perfect, more suitable for market. You need to find your product market fit. You need to make some some great experiences, some great products. You need to launch them. And only when you conducted it, you can go to investors at only in this time. Or either you need to have, you know, like a $1 million idea in order to come with a paper and say, look, I've got an idea because idea doesn't cost nothing at the current market you mm. need to have a team you need to have uh, an expertise you need to have uh, uh you know a clear plan for the future you need to have a perfect roadmap it all comes to a teamwork actually and uh, it all comes to your adoption of your product so when you reach uh, all these achievements then you can go and raise more huge amounts of money and is the is the idea to remain bootstrapped for the time being, or is there any interest in raising funds in the next couple of years? Um, I think that uh, if we have uh, more projects, uh, more life projects, uh, we're going to come to uh, to a point when we don't need, you know, investors. Or maybe, or maybe uh, we're going to find some investors uh, which can help us to to make uh, more faster steps because if you have you know more resources you can expand and uh, grow your project much fast more faster so yeah. probably yes if we if we receive a, a good offer from the investors we're going to accept it okay interesting so um, yeah we're kind of coming towards the end so um, for anybody that is listening where can they find out more about you where can they find more about meta ads and uh, is there anything you'd like to uh, sign off with yeah um, hey guys you can come to my linkedin uh, account and write me a message uh, i'm really open-minded and 100 percent i'm gonna answer you uh, yeah or you can visit our site metaads.team and you can try our platform because it is fully working it's on air 
and we are working in three metaverses at the moment and we are rising and we are growing our car coverage we are growing our partnerships uh we are open to make some collapse and we are open to create a great advertising experiences so we are waiting for you cool yaroslav mate thank you very much for your time uh can't believe an hour has gone already so thank you very much for taking your time and talking to me and uh yeah thanks for listening whoever's listening have a good day yeah <laughs> thank you david have thanks, a good mate. day bye bye